It's fall, y'all, and today we're going to do a cute little chipmunk with some fall vegetation as a border. I'm Viv with Art with Viv, and let's dive into it. Come on! So I have the cute little chipmunk. He's already been sketched out, and I just freehanded some little vegetation some ferns and some mushrooms around him some berries just to give it a fall look we're going to paint it in with some fall colors starting off with his eye i've got a little bit of blue mixed with some brown to make a nice dark color instead of using black straight out of the tube now i first uh, did a really light wash of the pale grayish black color that we mixed and now I'm just coming back in there. I'm leaving a little bit of it with the pale gray and I'm just adding some shadows into his eyes and working around while it's still wet. I am adding in more. Now I am using a number two low Cornell ultra round um, faux hair brush. Unfortunately, I haven't been able to find these. I'm sure you can find them somewhere but i love them because the point is is oh it's is just like it says it's ultra pointy so you can get some fine detail with it and now i am going to let that dry a little bit let his eyes dry while it's drying i'm going to go ahead and get some brown a nice sort of skim milk mixture and i'm just going to go ahead and paint the first layer of his fur in just paint all over his fur making sure that I avoid the places that I want to be white or light and around his little eyes, down his nose, across his cheeks and his little shoulders. And we're just gonna do a nice light wash of this sort of a reddish brown color. undercoating is is dry I'm mixing up just a little bit of pink and brown it's a rose with a little bit of brown we're gonna paint in his little nose his little pink nose and I'm just doing a light wash of that pinky brown color and he has a little berry or a little little berry in his hand and he is chomping down on it so now I'm gonna come back the first layer has dried some. I'm going to add a little bit of shadow in there. I'm just using a darker brown. Use whatever you have on your palette. You know, just have a, um, you can lighten a color with just water and then darken it by adding more paint, less water. Just remember that. Watercolor is really flexible, in my opinion. So now I'm just going in and painting in the markings on his face. His eyes are lighter around the eyes, so I'm painting around that light area, I'm not painting into it. Now I'm going with an even darker brown. And I'm going to add some shadow work in there while it's still wet, dropping it right into that medium brown paint that's still wet so that it has a nice blended look it's got soft edges no hard edges and it'll just sort of the water will help it just blend into those areas where i want it i have switched to a number four is that a number four or number two mimic creative mark mimic faux squirrel hairbrush and i am going ahead and Putting in the reason I switched is because it holds more water than those low Cornells, the one that I was doing with the eyes. Um, it holds more water and paint, so I can get more coverage quicker. So that's why I switched because I'm doing larger areas. And I'm just gonna come in here and add in some of the darker shadows. I added a little bit more of the brown, and then while it was still wet, just add some of that darker brown. That's all there is to it. I'm just trying to lay the groundwork for his shadows 
his light areas and his midtones. So that's what I'm going to be working on. I'm going to be quiet, let you watch, and I will be back with you shortly. getting close to finishing I'm just adding a little bit of texture we're getting close to finishing this layer and once we get in you know where we want our texture and sort of the light and dark patterns we're gonna let it dry let it dry completely and while I let it dry I decided that I was gonna go ahead and put some masking fluid on my vegetation so that it would be much easier to paint the background I should have done it at the beginning, but you know, sometimes while I'm painting, I change my mind. So I am going to go ahead and I'm going to apply the masking fluid and I will be quiet while you watch. You know how to apply masking fluid, hopefully by now. If you don't, um, the main things to worry about are use an old brush. Don't use one of your good brushes. Put a little bit of soap on the brush before you dip it into the masking fluid. Stir the masking fluid. Never shake it and let it dry thoroughly before you paint over it. Those are some of the basic tips. So I'll let you watch and then we, I will be back shortly with you. Okay, the masking fluid has dried now, completely dried and I'm taking my brush and I'm wetting the area and then I'm just taking a really deep blue um, I think this is indigo but you can use whatever blue dark blue that you prefer um, and then I'm just gonna paint all over the background and paint right over that masking fluid that was the whole point of the masking fluid so that I could paint freely over the background and not have to paint around each one of those little pieces of leaves vegetation mushrooms those things so we're just going to put that wash on that background you can wet it first or you can just apply it apply the paint straight to the dry background it's up to you i'm putting a little bit of moisture on first and then going in with the darker blue so that it sort of bleeds um, i just like the look of that better so you can experiment and see what you like it's your painting after all ain't nobody the boss of you but you so you do what you what you like to do. I'm just showing you what I do. And then you can do what you want to do. That's the beauty of art. You don't have to do it like everybody else does it. And you'll still be doing it right. So I love art. I love painting because you can just you can just express yourself however you feel like it. Don't let those art gatekeepers tell you you, you have to follow all the rules. You don't. It's nice to know the rules, but you don't have to follow them all the time. As a matter of fact, how are you going to learn anything if you're constantly worried that you're doing something wrong until you get yourself all in a, in a tizzy and, and you don't do anything? You, can't, you cannot paint like that. So don't be afraid of making mistakes. Don't be afraid of making something wrong or doing something wrong or breaking a rule. We don't care. We just want to paint, learn to paint, practice and express ourselves the way we feel like it we, we're not even paying attention to the art snobs not today so once you get that background in let it dry once it's dry I'm gonna come back and I'm gonna work a little bit more on my little um, 
chipmunks. I wanted to call him a cupcake. What in the world? Oh, my little chipmunk's eyes. I'm just darkening up his eyes. They're completely dry now, so I'm adding some of the darker darks in there. I'm making sure I'm leaving his highlights, though. Getting those in a nice shape, a nice dark color. Coming back in, adding some shadows on his little nose with that that brownie pink, that rose and brown that we mixed together earlier. And a little bit of shadow on it because we want to give him some dimension. And then we're going to come back in with a, that really the darkest brown that we've been using. You could use a burnt umber if you wanted to. Whatever dark brown that you have. Or you could mix a brown with a blue and just add just a tiny touch of blue to make that brown a little bit darker. It's really, really totally... Um, up to you how you get your dark brown if you want it straight out of the tube or if you want to mix it again your painting you do it your way so now I've switched back to that number two uh, ultra pointed round brush like I said it gives such fine detail these really tiny little hair marks I just love how how fine these details are that you can get with this brush it is probably one of my favorite brushes for painting fur and I am just working on that, working on that, working on that. Hold on, gotta sneeze. Who had to sneeze? I had to mute the mic for a second. I don't know what's gotten into me. Something is getting me allergic. So anyway, I'm just going to continue on that. I'm going to let you watch for a second and I will be back in just a minute.
So I've just added some details to his front paws and his front little arms, legs, and darkening up some of his tummy fur there. His tummy fur is just like a really pale brown, and I'm darkening that up, putting some shadows in, and I've got like a spotter brush, just a tiny brush that I'm doing that with, so that it'll fit in between that foliage. And just, just getting, making him look a little bit more three-dimensional and adding some of these shadows in here on his lower tummy. He's starting to come alive now, starting to look like a little chipmunk. I'll add a little bit more shadow on his upper tummy where his little arms are putting shadows on his tummy the way he's holding his little piece of fruit out there. Now I've removed all of the masking fluid and I did that with a rubber cement pickup. You can use your finger or something. I don't like to use my finger. I use that to feel to make sure I've got it all up, but I don't like to use my fingers to remove it. I use a rubber cement pickup. And now I'm just mixing some different fall colors for this mushroom. I'm going with orange and red and orangey red mushroom. And I'm just going to paint the foliage with fall colors that would be oranges, reds, um, crimsons, maroons, blue greens, pale greens, olive greens. So that's I'm just gonna get a mix of color and just paint all of the foliage in different colors a little bit at a time. I'm not painting like the leaves that are right behind the mushrooms at the same time because they'll bleed into each other. Now, if you want that look, go for it. I'm just not going to do that. I'm wetting my little fern shape here and I'm just gonna go ahead wet him first and then add a little bit of color. I've got some cobalt teal here and I am going to mix that up a little bit with some green just to make sort of a nice sort of blue green. It'll look really good next to that orange, that red orange. So that's what I'm going for here. I'm going to let you watch. Just remember, mix up whatever fall colors that you'd like. Paint that foliage around, remembering to paint, you know, pieces of foliage that aren't right against each other because you don't want it to bleed. So I'll let you, I'll be quiet a minute, I'll let you watch, and I will be back shortly.
that I have the foliage painted in, I'm gonna come back and clean up that background some, going straight onto dry paper because I wanna have a little bit more control. I don't want it to seep into the um, leaves that I've just painted and the little fall the little fall foliage around the edges. So I'm just, and I'm also taking like a, zero, a size zero zero brush. It's just like a little tiny spotter brush to get into those those places in between all of the leaves and the berries and those cute little mushrooms. And in the larger areas, I did not paint all the way up against this mushroom for whatever reason. Sometimes that happens, so now I'm going to come and correct that. Paint all the way up to that mushroom and fix that background right there. And this is just a tiny little painting. You don't have to put as much detail or, or fuss with it. It's just something to get you kind of going. Just, just a cute little thing. It would make a cute little card, a cute little gift tag if you made something like this. I just think it's a cute little easy thing. It, it takes a little while, but it's easy. You just do one step at a time. Remember, you can always pause the video, rewind it, really look close at what I'm doing. And it's just a fun little project. So I am going to continue working on that background, cleaning it up, and I will be back with you shortly. Once you get this background completed, I've got it darkened up to my satisfaction. Um, filling in a little, a few little areas with some of that reddish orange that I see that were white. So now here's my secret. All of those little tick marks that I made with that tiny brush, I'm going to take my large number 12, uh, size 12 brush, dip it in clean water, and go over all those tick marks. And what that does is it blends it slightly. You'll still see the texture, but it, it keeps it from sitting on top of the paper. It pushes it down into the paper and softens the look and makes it look a little bit more like fur. So that's my secret. The main thing is make sure that it's completely dry before you add that layer of clean water before you sort of um, put that water in and get those, those edges or not really edges but just get it from sitting on top of the paper kind of smooths it down so now i am just getting some of my white wash 
and I'm going to highlight his little eyes. I'm putting in some highlights here. I'm also coming back with some of the darker color where I got a little bit too much white wash. It's okay. We'll fix it when it's dry. I don't ever get my panties in a wad about stuff like that. So I've got a little white wash out on my palette you can use a white paint pen you can use white wash you can use white craft paint you can use a white colored pencil as long as it is opaque enough that you know it it sits on top of the paper and the color doesn't shine through it and i'm just taking that and adding some highlights around his fur with that white just sort of jazzing him up a little bit and a little sparkle we add some sparkles and some glisten to his fur with that he's gonna be a little sparkly chipmunk and so we're gonna put that in I'm using that double zero size brush it's really small I just want tiny hair like strokes because I don't want it to, to overwhelm the painting like I said I just want to add a little white sparkle I'm gonna come and put some patterns on the mushrooms some little dots like those um, those mushrooms I want to call them fly agaric air I, I can't pronounce whatever they're this little mushrooms with red caps and white dots and i've only seen one of those in person my whole entire life like i found one in the woods so i don't know if they're just not native to here but i've only seen one so now there we go we've got it finished i hope you enjoyed this um please consider watching more videos if you would like and also hit the subscribe button and i shall see you soon thank you for watching